Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this week I interviewed influencer and motivational speaker Jordan Bone. Here's how it went. Well thanks for um, asking me to come on today. For the people who are watching this, who are you and what do you yeah. do? Yeah, so my name is Jordan Bone. I am, well, I do YouTube, Instagram, um, and I'm a life coach as well. Um, back in 2005, I had a car accident which left me paralyzed from the chest down, and I got in major depression. And in a short answer, I sort of saw the light and kind of became really positive again through guided meditation. And from there on, I had a massive spiritual awakening and um, I like to spread positivity wherever I go now. So on my, all of my like channels, my YouTube, Instagram, with my clients, just as much as I can, because I want everyone to live the most fulfilled life possible. So that's like a little brief about me. <laughs> that's fantastic. Now you said there that you kind of, like you had loads of different challenges, what you faced but then you overcame them, you saw the light. What was the main thing, what kept you going? How did you overcome them? Well, when I, I got to a point where I was so depressed that I wanted to die because when the car accident left me as a C6 quadriplegic, which means I'm paralyzed from the chest down and having to use a wheelchair, obviously. Um, and I just didn't see that my life would be how I envisioned it anymore. I thought, that my life was over, I couldn't achieve what I wanted to achieve and all the bad stuff, I just saw like darkness around myself. Like it was like, I couldn't see the light. When I started, when I was just looking on YouTube one day, I came across guided meditations and I was like, oh, I've never heard of this before, like on YouTube or anything. I've never really tried it. I think I tried it once when I was about 14 in like a yoga studio, but I hadn't really thought of it um, before. Um, and then I did it and I was just like, wow. <laughs> so I kept trying them. And then I was just like, I just couldn't believe how amazing it was because I started to see that life is amazing in whatever circumstance you're in. So when I was in the car accident, I was like fighting for my life. I could have died. Like I was like, no, 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 I've got to stay here. I've got so much to do. And I really wanted to stay on this earth and I could see the light. I was like being drawn to it, but I was really pulling back saying, no, I've got so much to do. And so I started singing to myself to keep myself awake. And I was at that point, I was just doing anything to stay present. So I didn't drift away. And it was funny because obviously then when I got depressed, all I wanted to do was die. So it was like really ironic that when I was in the car, I would have done anything to live. And then I got to the point where I was just alive, breathing, you know, although I had this injury, I was still here and I just didn't want to be anymore. And even in the car, I knew I was paralyzed. So it's not like I had no idea what was happening. I could just tell straight away with my intuition, I think. And obviously I couldn't move and I couldn't feel my body. Uh, but then once I discovered guided meditation and started to realize that life is beautiful no matter what your situation like literally we are the lucky ones it's so rare to be alive it's so so rare so i started to see life in a new through new eyes really or my, maybe my old eyes it was kind of like before i was like uh, i was masking myself and i was just not sure on what was happening with my life but then i started to think actually i can take this into my own hands and from that point forward, I thought, well, I need to always make that 15 year old me proud. Mm -hmm. And she, like, I'm still that person, but it feels like a, another life in a way at the same time. And I was doing everything to keep here. So in order to like have a good life, it's up to me. And although things may be hard, I can still make things really good if I want to, because that's up to me. And that's when, that's what keeps me going is knowing that you know, I could have died, but I survived. And I even survived going through mental health as well. So it, it, it's just all little bits and bobs that kind of pushed me through all the time. And at that point really made me reevaluate how I was seeing the world. That's brilliant. Can I just 
say I think you're absolutely amazing I think what you've been through and just how you've overcome it is amazing I've read your book Ah, <laughs> thank you would you say part of that healing process was writing your book I mean did you write it to kind of get everything out like a diary or was it to kind of help others so I've always wanted to write a book probably from when I was about 21 I wanted to write a book because I'd overcome it at this point maybe 21 22 and I'd overcome the darkness at that point so I really wanted to share my story because I felt like I had something to say that could help people um I felt that I felt like I'd been through for me it was the worst thing I mean it's all relative like someone could go through something that may not seemingly be as bad but it's still bad for them because we all deal with what we have to deal with so no matter what people struggle I was like I want to share my story somehow then the years went by and I just hadn't got around to it really and then one day I was about 26 I think um that's when I started doing my book and it was just it was yeah I just wanted to share my story and hopefully reach out to people who may be thinking oh you know they're not good enough or that they're feeling a bit down hopefully it gives people a bit of encouragement to live their best life and what a lovely idea as well yeah. you to want to share that and want to help others you mentioned in your book you should treat people how you want to be treated and like we live by that as a family so that related so much to me I mean how did you feel when people weren't treating you how you wanted to be treated I mean that is a really tricky one because a lot of the time people even now can be kind of sometimes like scared to talk to me it seems um, because of the injury or like a, like they don't know how to approach it and it's like well I'm just me and just happen to be sat down so really it's about kind of educating people and that's kind of in a way you know online I don't necessarily talk about spinal injuries all the time but I put myself out there to show that I am just like every other woman so really it's all about awareness because I think that people are just scared because they think they're going to say the wrong thing and I'm like well I'm not my injury. I'm Jordan. I don't talk about my injury like all, like that isn't even anything that comes up in conversations with my friends. It's just there. I mean, you can't ignore it because I'm sat down in a wheelchair, but really once you become, once you, once you know someone, like all my friends, they're sometimes even forget. They're like, oh yeah, but not because they're, it's because they know me and they love me for me as I do them. Um, I mean, I've had a few situations, quite a lot actually, where people will walk up to me back when uh, we could go out and go on nights out and stuff, um, and just come up to me and literally just say to me, what happened? And it really, like, I'm, I always end up feeling empathic towards the person asking because I don't want them to feel silly for asking. But at the same time, it's, I think if that was, if, it's fine asking me because I'm okay. But if they asked me when I first had my accident, it probably would ruin my night. And it probably, I mean, if something, you know, they don't know what's happened and something really traumatic could be happening. It could, I could really affect me and I could be really nervous to leave the house. So I think people should be more mindful really um, when they say things like that, because it's fine if you're having a conversation with someone and people are intrigued, like when you get, you talking to someone, but to walk over to somebody and just literally say, what happened to you? It's kind of like, oh, what? Okay. Um, and that's happened a few times. And I remember most recently that happened like three times in an evening. And I was like, what? Like, it's crazy. But, you know, I think it's so important to treat people equally and just kind of think, well, would I like it if someone said that to me? I don't want people to think that they can't ask questions because absolutely ask questions, but don't be going over to someone and that be the only reason you want to talk to them is asking them what's wrong because really nothing's wrong I'm fine I'm living my life <laughs> <laughs> no I completely agree now you have not long started Jordan Bone coaching tell yeah. me a bit about that so I mean about a couple of years ago um I was thinking about well, actually, last year, actually, I'm getting confused with the dates, I was wanting to become a life coach. I I thought, well, I've got all this to offer. Like, I've got all my stories that I share online with people. I've written my book. I've done a lot of inner work for myself. I'm like, I need to share this with people to help them on an individual basis because 
it's nice being on YouTube and being on Instagram, but you don't get that connection that you would if you were talking to someone like how we're talking like on Zoom and kind of feeling someone's energy and kind of just actually helping them individually and seeing the results. So I thought that I would start Jordan Bone Coaching and just help as many people as I can um, through self-love mainly. Um, that's my main topic, but also spirituality um, and whatever people are kind of needing help with because I feel that I've got a lot of tools in my toolbox to reach into to help guide people. Um, and I think it's super important to, if you have this knowledge and wisdom, wisdom but um, like if I've learned all the tools and I've had these, you know, dark times, that there's a reason for it and there's a purpose and there's, you know, that experience, all the experiences I've been through can help someone else to kind of live their best life possible. And that's what I say is like, live your best life possible because we all deserve to. And it's just up to us to kind of do that because there's so, so many situations where we're like, well, I can't do this because of that. And it's like, but really we, we are the masters of our reality. We can create what we want to create. And if we really want to go for something, we can achieve it. And I really believe that self-love and self-worth really has a lot to do with it. If someone wanted to apply for that coaching, how do they go about doing that? So at the moment, my website is still being created, but people can DM me on Jordan Bone Coaching because I see the DMs easier on that one than not my personal one. Um, so yeah, if they reach out, DM me and I'll send over like information through email and then we can go from there and see what works, see what fits. So everyone's different. Um, I have the self-love um, program at the moment but also just one-on-one -on -one coaching with whatever they need. And also I do bespoke plans as well. So if someone wants to do like coaching for three months, we can arrange something together that will, um, you know, be right for them, a good fit. So yeah, so if they'd reach out there, that's where they can reach me. So with spirituality, <laughs> would you say that kind of came to you from the accident? I mean, a lot of the time I say people who have near-death experiences have like, are probably getting connected with I think that does sometimes give you that connection I think we're all kind of like psychic I think we all have these abilities because we're all spiritual like I think some people just tap into it more and when you've been through an experience like that I think you just start to see the world a bit differently as well and you think well there seems to be more and when I saw like a white light and stuff I was like I can't explain that um and then when I discovered guided meditation, it was kind of like I was always being guided to follow some sort of spirituality, spiritual path. And I was like, well, this has to be something because it keeps kind of coming into my life. And so I think the accident did help me get there. But at the same time, I, when I look back, even as like, this is really funny, but even when I was about 12 and stuff, I used to buy like spell books. <laughs> and like, I, yeah, I used to go to like, this little shop in town called Hocus Pocus and they had like spell books and candles and incense and I'd buy it and sit like in my room and as I've got older I was like well that is a, it is different but at the same time I'm into manifestation which is kind of like a spell because you're kind of you know words are energy and you kind of um you're bringing it into your life so it kind of is like that so really I think it's kind of always been in me it's just I've learned to it's just came out of me even more and it's funny because really um it kind of got hidden at some points like I would still meditate and stuff but I kind of would be a bit closed off to sharing it with people um like family and friends and exes and stuff like that and then it got to lot like all of 2018 I got really back to in alignment and then last year I fell off of alignment a little bit and then at the end of last year, I came back to it and I was like, Jordan, you need to just keep doing your spiritual work because that is really what your, your purpose is. This is part of your journey and it, it keeps coming back to you. So it's telling you something. Every time I do it, I feel good. So really it's the path I'm supposed to go down. And it's kind of nice to have that confirmation to know that what you're doing is kind of where you should be after all this time of like it being thrown in my face and I'm ignoring it. And then I'm like, okay, I can help people like I do oracle cards and everything so and I've done them for ages I've had them for 10 years like and I kind of dwindled in and out but over the past two years I've been really like working with them and now I'm going to offer that as a service as well because 
I absolutely love it. Like it's, they're so accurate and just such a good tool to kind of know where to go next sometimes. But at the same time with that, it's always good to know that you have free will. So if you get a card reading and you're not happy with it, it doesn't mean it's set in stone. You can then notice things around you. They think, no, I'm going to change that because that card said this was coming in. So I think people get scared like, oh no, it's not what I want to hear. But it's like, well, it's still up to you if you want it to change. So for yeah. those who don't know, would you mind just explaining what's guided meditation and what are oracle cards? So guided meditation, I think is probably the easiest way to get into meditation because someone is talking you through it. You know, with meditation, a lot of people can think that and be overwhelmed that they're going to have too many thoughts in the head. But meditation is a practice. So your meditation practice, you just need to do it every day and you'll get better and better at it. So I always say to people, try guided meditations because that's how I started. And I still do them because I do like hearing people talk through them and guide you down like into a nice place. So basically with a guided meditation, someone will be talking you through meditation, telling you when to take deep breaths and, and also it may take you to like a nice, they'll make you envision a nice area, a nice beach or something. And it's just really to get your mind really relaxed and your body relaxed to raise your frequency. So you're more positive and you're radiating more positive energy and high energy. And from that, you're radiating more love. So when you're in a positive state, you're more likely to manifest good things into your life as well because you're feeling good. And ultimately, that's what we want. We all want to feel great. And that's what meditation does. It kind of just makes you feel real good. Um, but there's different types of meditation. You can just do some breathing exercises on your own. Um, you can, there's like this thing called box breathing, which you can do just throughout the day. Um, it's just breathing in for four, holding for four, exhaling for four and holding for four. So that's something really simple, but really it can help people if they're just like at their office, at their desk, out in, the, out in nature, and you just want to do a bit of breathing to bring them back to the moment because really being in the moment is what is key instead of like drifting off all the time and um oracle cards so they're like tarot cards they're kind of like connecting with the divine like angels guides um spirit energies whatever you want to call it you can ask a question and sometimes i just pull a card like one card like what are the guidance from what is the guidance you have for me today and i've got a card and it's just nice to have that confirmation and also just to connect with uh, higher energies as well but that's a good support and it's good to kind of see if you're on the right track and if you need to be aware of anything as well in your life, you can ask questions for anything with that. But there's so many things. There's so many spiritual practices that I love. I mean, a lot of the spiritual practices are in my self-love program. So like people may think self-love is like running a bath and stuff. Yes, it is like self-care. But at the same time, a lot of the things that we need to do is a little bit more like, you know, meditation, um, movement journaling gratitude all things like that so it's not always just about a bubble bath and a face mask it's all about kind of doing all the practices so you then know how to like love yourself fully finally my final source of question is i've got 10 quick questions okay right so favorite book favorite book the alchemist dark chocolate or milk chocolate milk chocolate 100 <laughs> percent one makeup product you couldn't be without. Ooh, ooh, highlight. <laughs> oh, is that right? No, eyebrow product. I don't. Ah. <laughs> oh, I can't choose. Oh, Maybe no. eyebrows because if I've got my eyebrows on, I don't mind if I haven't got any other makeup on. Yeah, eyebrows. Okay. <laughs> Favorite fashion brands. Um, I buy a lot from ASOS, but there's loads of different brands on there, so. Yeah, I'd just say ASOS in general. Um, peanut butter or Marmite? Peanut butter. Should pineapple be on pizza? Do you know what? I've never tried it. Yeah. No. I'm shocked. <laughs> I know. I've never tried it, so I can't comment. But maybe I should try it sometime. Favourite day of the week? Um, Saturday. Tea or coffee? Tea. And one bit of advice for anyone who's going through a challenging time. Know that it's a bad moment, not a bad life. And know that you can embrace it because you've got through stuff before. Know that you, even if you're going through a challenging time, know that it'll be just that moment in time. Because if you look back and there's been bad times before, you've got over them. So just know that you've got this. You can 
do it. You can get through it. And it may be hard right now, but look how proud you'll be once, once it's over. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's been lovely. So thank you for having me on here. So that concludes this week's interview with Jordan Bone. I hope you all learned something from her interview. I know for me, what I learned is, you know, in life, we go through different things, but it's a bad moment, but not a bad life. I think that's something we all have to remember. To follow Jordan on social media, I will put her usernames here. If you have someone that inspires you, comment below. I'm always so intrigued to find out who other people find inspiring. Likewise, if you believe that you're an inspirational person, comment below, drop me a message on social media or drop me an email. This Wednesday at five o'clock, I'll be speaking to swimming record holder, Edward Baxter. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you all on Wednesday. See you later.